All right, Seaton. what is the poll question that we're going to start out hour one with? Well, do you want to start with Shohei? Sure. Do we go with something as simple as, do you believe Shohei Otani? But how much am I believe? Like the whole story? Do I believe him? Do I believe they had nothing to do with this? Um, how much involvement do you think Shohei had? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to be fair. Yeah, it's tricky because, I mean, he sounded like he uh, had been taken advantage of, that right. he was innocent, that he didn't know what was going on. It's just, it's really rare when we have some kind of sports crime or somebody related uh, to a crime who is involved in sports. I mean, Manti Teo is the one where everybody got that wrong because we kept thinking, how could you be duped like that? Well, he was duped like that. But it's really rare when somebody says, hey, I had nothing to do with this. Lance Armstrong, he was America's hero. I had nothing to do with that. Mark McGuire, America's hero. Nothing to do with... It's just rare when it happens. But it does happen, and you still have to go into this going, I need to hear both sides. And that's the, that's the troubling part for me. It feels like there's been a couple of different stories I think that there was maybe some troubleshooting that went on from Otani's uh, you know, side of this, and they did a good job. You know, they, they basically said, look, this guy's been lying all of his life, the jobs that he's had, but he's been a friend of Otani's for, since they were teenagers. And how much access did you give him? I guess I'd still want to know, why would a bookie, an illegal bookie, give somebody – like his interpreter, that much room. So you're going to give him that much credit? I mean, it's there's millions of dollars here. He doesn't have millions of dollars. And I think that's what a bookie would at least be curious about. Where's this money coming from? Are you going to be able to cover this? And maybe it's, hey, he covered this. Uh, you know, I don't care where the money came from. A bookie doesn't care. They just want the money. Yes, he... But he has... But has the appearance of access to an unbelievable fortune. And now, granted, I haven't, I've never once worked with an illegal bookie, yeah. but my sense of the craft is that they're not necessarily as concerned about can you cover your bets, but you're going to cover your bets one way or the other. So yeah. I, I don't know. Do bookies say, like, I don't, do you have enough in your account for this? This seems awfully well, like a lot. I, they, they normally don't let you have like a half a million dollars or a million dollars. I know I know high school kids whose parents had to take out another mortgage on their house to cover that kid's gambling debts. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was a minor. Yeah. How did he get access if, if he, you know, did he have access to, uh, you know, the wire transfer? Uh, I'm curious about that. Yeah. How did, you know, did the bank flag this that would be another thing like where's this money going that's a lot of money so they're they're just they're, there's questions here and he didn't take questions i thought you know he said uh, at one point hey it's great to talk to you about this well they didn't really talk it was just he through an interpreter was saying you know his side of the story but there's a lot of questions that still exist with this and i'll go back to what bob nightingale the great baseball writer for usa today said that he thinks, worst case scenario, Otani may get fined for this. And maybe that's all it is. Maybe he's, and, and I don't know what baseball's investigation, uh, you know, what it's going to try to find out or pin its uh, investigation on. But I, it wouldn't take that long if I'm the commissioner to say to Otani, hey, I want to talk to you. I got questions, and uh, here are my questions. Tell me so I can understand this. So, you know, we can do our due diligence here and uh, we can move on. The The Ill illegal bookie has been investigated for a couple of years now. And I think they just saw that, wow, that's a that's a big number that's coming your way. And where's it coming from? And Otani said he was surprised. He didn't know anything about this. He was told after game one in uh, South Korea. And it makes sense because he and Mizuhara are standing next to each other in the dugout. They're like having fun. Everything's good. So that that's an image that I keep replaying, that those two in the dugout, and they're just chatting. It didn't feel like that there was any real issue. And here is uh, Otani talking about when he found out that there was a problem. 
So Ipe has been telling everybody around that he that Ipe has been communicating with Shohei on all of this account, to my representative, to the team, and that hasn't been true. The first time I knew about this gambling, uh, Ipe's gambling, was after the first game when we had the team meeting in the clubhouse. So during the team meeting, obviously, Ipe was speaking in English, and I didn't have a translator on my side. But even with that, I kind of understood what was going on and started to feel that there was something uh, amiss. Then he uh, goes on to say that uh, Ipe, the uh, interpreter, had access to his account. And finally, when we b- went back to the hotel and talked one to one, that was when I was uh, when I found out that he had a massive uh, debt. And it was revealed to me during that meeting that he Ipe admitted that he was sending money uh, using my account to the bookmaker. And then he wanted to put this on record, so I'm going to put it on record on this sport or, or on this show that what he was talking about, if he had anything to do with betting. So I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. Uh, and I have never uh, went through a bookmaker uh, to bet on sports. Okay. Had to get that out there just so, you know, because we're curious about that. Has he ever placed a bet before, whether it's on baseball or not? Has somebody placed a bet for you? That's also something that we would be curious about. But this is the first real hiccup with, you know, Shohei. Other than this, it's been this great curiosity, this phenom, this now the best player in the sport, uh, the next Babe Ruth, a $700 million contract, playing for the Dodgers. Now you're going to play in playoff games. Everything was great. Got married. Everything was great. And then all of a sudden, boom, got hit with this. But as far as, you know, it might quiet down now. Now, usually this is what happens. It's like something explodes right in front of you, and then you look for the fallout, and then all of a sudden you'll revisit this. I don't know when baseball comes out with its investigation, If you've been investigating this illegal bookie for two years, that'll give you an idea. This uh, moves at a snail's pace here. And I don't know if we find out anything anytime soon that either is, you know, exonerates uh, Otani, backs up his story, or maybe adds more questions to this. But what he did yesterday was, I thought, maybe going to be a conversation with reporters. It turned out that it was one-sided, and he was going to give his uh, thoughts on all of this, which... I think he came off pretty well, but still, my job is to be curious and suspicious. And just because we all love Otani, it's a great story, great team, uh, you still have to have questions answered there. And uh, we'll continue to follow it, see if there's something that's there. I think it's, it's tricky to get into, oh, baseball should suspend him. Okay, why? Oh, it's, he's, the, he's Pete Rose. No, he's not. Like, we don't want to wait anymore. Everybody's got to have a hot take. And you got to be fair. I mean, it may not be great programming, may not be great radio, but you still have to be fair. And maybe he was duped. So it, I, I know at first you're like, well, it's an interpreter. No, it's his best friend. It's somebody who he said he spends more time with and has spent more time with than his now wife. They've known each other a long, long time. I'm just curious from, you know, once again, Otani never was curious that his interpreter, his best friend, lied about working for the Red Sox and the Yankees. That, to me, would have come up in conversation. Hey, why did you say you worked for the Yankees and the Red Sox and you didn't? And it, and it sounds like his interpreter has a pattern of, of lying. And here's another one that came up yesterday. And somebody in baseball said this, that it's easy to go, well, why would you give this guy access to your account? Or how could you not know this? There are husbands and wives who are keeping things from one another. It happens all the time. It happens in business. You can have a personal assistant. But if you're a gambler or a drug addict, or an alcoholic, you do your best to hide those things. I was just surprised that the interpreter tells ESPN that Otani covered my bets. They came from his account. 
that's where the red flag came up for me. Okay, so that that never happened? Why did he say that? You want to protect your best friend? You didn't protect your best friend doing that. If you have a problem, then you know that that's where you should have been at least fair to Otani, if he is totally innocent. Did he know anything about this? It doesn't sound like he did. And it goes back to where Otani said, after game one, I'm in South Korea, and then I realized that there's something up here. Yeah, Seaton. Yeah, that's the thing about liars. They lie. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you just if you just take everything from the interpreter was gambling and then lied to everybody, yeah. uh, it all kind of makes sense. In some, in, at least to me. And you got to be a really good liar uh, if you're going to try to do that where you're hiding four and a half million dollars and Otani is not going to see it or somebody's not going to see it or the bank's not going to flag it. I mean, pretty incredible. Yeah, Paul. The one thing about this story is Otani and his team have declared a direction, a clear direction. We never bet. We never knew about it. We didn't participate. Yeah. We didn't fund it. We didn't had no knowledge until after that game. There's no going back on that one. No, you know th this. If anything goes the other way on this one, it'll go completely the other way. They've picked their direction, and it it has to be the right one. But they have to say that, whether it's true or not. You yes. have to say that because if you don't, then all of a sudden everybody's going to go, "Oh, he's lying." Now the investigation starts to heat up a little bit.